Ding ding. What an awesome close. All right, hold on. Right in the sweet spot. 46% profits. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah, I got 40%. Well, might be a little higher than 40%. Not the full deal, but pretty good. All right, let's look at the end of day. 15 minutes of x-rays are no fun anymore. Wow, you could have bought the 25 for a dollar and sold it for a dollar 20. <laughs> or you could have bought the 25 put and you would have made three bucks at the end of the day. So yeah, we closed. We closed like right in the right in the median range there for what the market maker was pricing in. Up 17 points for the day. Not a very impressive close and still below that supportive level at 25 where I think we really wanted to be. We rejected right off of the two standard deviation first thing this morning. Fell down but managed to hold 52.10 so charm turned a little positive into the end of the day and gave us gave us a lift above 52.20. Uh, ES, however, has rejected now on the 15 minute off of the retest of the trend, uh, which I told us, I told us earlier to expect, expect that retest, right? Um, and then a rejection from there that has room to falter. Um, I do think, I do think bulls will try to stabilize this at least until, uh, PPI on Tuesday. So Monday's, Monday's probably going to be pretty boring too. Um, unless something happens over the weekend that dramatically changes like dollar value or something like that. Um, we do have some short-term lending facility stuff out of China. I guess if they claw back rates, we could see the yuan drop against the dollar, which could drive the dollar back up into that like 106 range. It is expected that they'll cut rates. Um, but they tend to be kind of flighty with their, like the PBOC is not very reliable with their projected decisions. So we'll see, we'll see what they do. What does this close for Jimmy options chain mean? Uh, we could talk about that for a second. Um, it's not great. It's not that bad. Most of the call interest today was at like 17, but a lot of that's going to be falling off along with, uh, I think a pretty decent amount of charm. Um, let me check how much that is, because that's, that's not exactly bullish. Charm was still pretty negative. Yeah, maybe, maybe that, maybe this close won't have that much of an impact. <laughs> I think Jamie can still run a little bit next Monday, Tuesday. Like, it's got, it's got a tiny bit of room to, to bounce, like, one more time, maybe, um, to the upside. Short puts are still pulling back, and I'll get more data on that tonight. And I'll uh, I'll put it in the GME chat on Sunday, or we'll talk about it on the Sunday stream. They were fifty five cents. It's a pretty good deal. Uh, fifty five cents to three bucks isn't bad, or two. I guess like two fifty. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that maybe maybe one more top isn't isn't unreasonable here. Like uh, I don't know if we'll get the same twenty dollar and eighteen cent test. But we might get like 1950, 1980 again before 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 the rest of the short puts are closed out. Today's expert is going to see a ton of options move off of the chain though. So things are going to shift around a bunch and I'm going to have to wait for more data to really clue everybody in on what's going to happen there. Uh, upstart looks pretty good for T2. I'm, I'm going to go over this shit on the weekend. I'm not going to cover it now. Anyway, yeah, ES failed the test. Might continue to fail. Uh... Support at 52.30, If 52.30, fails, there's a very good chance that we see a move back to 5,200. Um, this, this is not a bullish breakout of the, of the trend, right? Like, uh, the, you know, and, and this is even, even less indicative of continued upside. So yeah, we could, we could see a, a move back to 5,200, which is about 51.80 SPX, a little bit below. Uh, commodities up 20 points today, uh, pushing ahead, probably in expectation that China is going to cut rates Sunday. Yields up a little bit across the board, 10 year back to 4.5, dollar up about 10 points on the day. Um, looks like it got most of its gains against the euro, uh, uh, the yuan, and the yen. BTC down 3.6%. Gold is surging again, and that's something we should keep an eye on um, as far as risk on risk off type behavior goes gold surging into a rising market is a very bad sign 
So, uh, you know, this is, this, this was a big leading indicator for our last major correction. It could be again. So keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on commodities. Keep an eye on oil. Um, oil did pull back a little bit today. Um, but it's been, it's been a bit touchy and if it gets back above 80, um, that could be, that could be a driver of volatility correlation on the three month turned around today. So a little bit of breakdown in the longer term dispersion trade. However, the one month, you know, they're still leading into our synth swap on USD yen kind of moved up a bit. Uh, leverage moved a tad bit higher, but not very much. Uh, forward yield on volatility looks like it's maybe starting to bottom out and turn around and the yield curve is starting to tighten up again. Um, this could be a precursor to us seeing financial conditions tighten again and put some squeeze on that leverage. Now remember, we're post we're post uh, haircuts that occurred a couple of weeks ago. So um, a lot of a lot of that leverage is already a little bit limited. And if it tightens up again, it may not it may not be uh, as supportive as it was last time. So we may see short vol actually have to pull back positioning instead of versus you know what they did last time, which was just sell more short vol, right? Uh, obviously, that's that seems like it's a really stupid solution to short vol getting squeezed, but it's worked out for them a couple of times now. This time it could end up being a little bit more restrictive. Move isn't updated yet. Skew pulled back a little bit. Uh, so we are seeing a little bit of the tail risk hedging fall off. Now, largely, I think this is part of crossing 5,200 and CTA is starting to feel like they need, th th that we have support here. Um, we do, but it may not last, right? Uh, the support we have uh, is definitely not enough to hedge against hot CPI or hot PPI next week. Um, if inflation expectations rise again, it's going to be it's going to be pretty bearish, uh, especially since the bond market's been largely in disagreement with the equity market uh, since since we bounced. Seventy three point seven percent of the S and P over its twenty day moving average, and correlation between uh, short vol or uh, VIX and uh, cash VIX fell again today becoming once again more positively correlated we're at 36 negative 36 percent yesterday or rose I guess correlation increased between the two um, we're now at negative 33.7 percent 0.07 percent um so that's turning around a little bit over the last two days um and we may as we move into vix expiration we may start to see that correlation move even more positive uh, we're still we're still a, a month out from the, the the quarterly but um which will be in june but uh this was a this is a very very hard push into negative correlation and i wouldn't be surprised if it reverted just as quickly Lastly, we're pricing in after Michigan consumer expectation and the hotter inflation expectations. Uh, today, we're now pricing in 32 points of rate cuts for the rest of 2024, moving down from that kind of halfway mark between 50, between two rate cuts and one rate cut uh, towards run one rate cut. And the bond market obviously, you know, uh, felt the pinch there with that, with that move in expectations. As far as the technicals go, we still don't have a full reversal. Um, we're still looking at that prior high um, from back in March at 52.64. Today's today's kind of doji could be could be a reversal signal and a move back to retest right here, which is kind of the median of our trading range over the last three months at 51.89. If we fail, um, we can pretty quickly slip back below the 200 MA and the 30 EMA. Something to note here is on the monthly, we're still very much in the inside the trading range from April, right? Which means that we, we don't really have a bullish bias yet. We would need to form a higher high for that. Um, and, and this could easily underperform into the back half of the month, which is a little bit more obvious out here on the weekly as this, you know, failed to regain that prior high or even test it. Um, this is, this is kind of a weak, a weak breakout. 
and next week's breakout like next week's you know uh next week could be a failure of the trend um and if if it is that that would be you know a reversal signal on a break of 5111 sell in may walk away that's that's a possibility yeah that we we see some uh we see some of that and we are we are seeing that sentiment echoed in the options chain as fewer and fewer uh calls and puts are being opened up towards the backside of uh summer so like september september opex is quite weak right now june's not very strong either we're not yeah we're not seeing a ton of positioning further out uh, most of the bullish positioning still very short dated and a lot of it falling off today and i'm sure they'll, they'll keep zero dts coming in into monday but the the, the positioning isn't durable so uh yeah next week can be pretty exciting we got a lot of data coming in um i will see you guys s sunday at uh 12 30 p.m eastern time for the member stream thank you all so much for tuning in i hope you guys have a great weekend and uh the rest of you i will see you monday morning later guys